Go. Hello? Hello? Today on Cabalcast, we are going to be in Command & Conquer 3, Kane's Wrath, doing a 3 versus 3 video commentary. And today I'm going to be, I'm not alone. I am with a very special uh, guest with me today. His name is Liquid Ocelot. You know him from Red Alert 3. He's going to be with me today. What's up, dude? Uh, hello. Thank you so much, uh, Cabal, for having me in this, uh, this uh, wonderful place of yours. And uh, uh, what kind of game are we casting today? Well, like I said, we're going to be casting a three versus three. This game is on the members tab with a couple of webs, and it features uh, six players. We got Extremizer, he's playing as Nod. We have Senna playing in as Reaper Seventeen, and Aggressor Rue is Blackhand. And then the other team, Team Two, is Pillar Sentence, which is not the real Death Sentence. He is Jania, and we have Smiley Face, which is obviously Incapiza, and One Vision as well. So it's going to be a three versus three. And, and this is going to be on the map uh, Tiberian Resistance, which I'm super excited to be on. Okay, you ready to go? Yes. Okay, so one, two, three, go. So it so starts off with a blue feeler right here. Uh, let's go to the top here. We see this is purple. This is going to be one vision. He's playing as a purple screen faction. And just to the left or the right of him, we see this is blue. This is Incapiza. He's playing as a blue GI faction. He is going to be Steel Talons. And green, who is this? Is going to be Jania. He's been playing as a green screen. And down at the bottom here, we see... Uh, uh, this is Extremizer. He's playing as the orange nod. And his partner to the left of him... Nope, was that orange or pink? Oh, no, I'm just playing... I'm just seeing things. My bad. This is yellow. He. This is Aggressor Rue. He's playing as a yellow nod. And this is Crayon. Last member is Senna. Playing as the Reaper 17. So, like, all six of these players are going to be going to capture their tip spikes. And it's going to be very interesting to see what players do. Obviously, green... Uh, green at Jania, he's going to be going as Travra 59. So Travra 59 is going to be on the cards now. He has to be careful he doesn't get uh, overly overly uh, excited that these Viceroys don't destroy his uh, disintegrator squads. Obviously, I'm not going to. We're not going to get all the action here, dude, because it's just so many, so much action in three versus three, right? Yeah, it's way too much action. You have to deal with a lot of stuff that comes towards you. And obviously, we see here that Jania is kind of screwed up in his expansion. He, or in his uh, extractor, he uh, placed it in a way that the harvester has to go around the extra extractor to get his uh, Tiberium. That's a misclick if I ever seen one. And everybody else is just going to go to capture their uh, other other tip fields. And we see these fast singular squads coming out from Jania. He's trying to do a little bit of harvester harassment, but they don't see any harvesters. There's a uh, Sell off of a tier two structure, get the black hand squad, and then I'll chase those senior squads away. Mm hmm The singers are very, very fast units. They uh, can deal with uh, pretty good um, harvesters, especially when they're fast like this, where they have fast uh, advanced articulators, which some people call fast lace, because it's a lot simpler to understand. Oh, we see a reckoner coming out here from Reckoner coming off from yellow, uh, Aggressor Rue, and he kind of caught out of position there. Those Disinger squads put it into damage mode, and eventually it's going to be deployed. So that was a fail there by Aggressor Rue there. Too bad. Purple is going to be uh, one vision here. One vision is going to be getting up his economy in the green field right here, which is going to be fantastic. And green field right here is going to be super huge economy, getting going into the late game. A couple of random infantry squads all across the map here, so we're going to be seeing a quite a long game, or maybe not a long game, but this is going to be this is supposed to be one crazy one, and so far so good for all six of these players. Except the the early start from extreme might is failure to get the retinas retina in base of enemy, and also he lost his character. Yeah, collect. Yeah, yeah, collectors. Yeah, collectors, which is called harvesters in this game. But uh, yeah, he did lose one of his harvesters, which is not that great. So, but he's he's gonna get back the economy because he's got four tip spikes to his name, so he'll be fine with that. Wolverines and secret tanks coming out from Incapiza at one vision, so getting up the economy, just getting up the uh, units, and uh, see what everybody else can do. Oh, we see some bikes coming in from uh, Gresseru here, and he did take out one of the harvesters from um, from Jania, so that's not good. And we see a couple of the, the bikes are not actually out of position. They're still out of position, though. And they haven't go back to base, and they're going to be all wasted 
all wasted bikes. They're taking on one harvester, but they lose five bikes. So uh, Jania getting a little bit of revenge there, destroying all the bikes, which is not so good. You need a lot of uh, the, those bikes need to go back to base. Aggressor who kind of failed the position. His MCV, on the other hand, is in uh, is uh, stalled right now. He hasn't expanded all at all to his green or to his uh, other green expansion yet. So he needs to do something about that. In the meantime, one vision is stealing a lot of blue tip. Oh, this is going to be juicy for him. This is making it so that uh, he's going to be getting up a lot of economy and quite possibly going for some aircraft. Yeah, One Vision is a very, very good screen player. I mean, I like to I like to watch this guy. He actually came through the ranks uh, earlier last year. He got into the uh, pro status mode, and not, not a lot of games are going to be a lot of games are going to be coming from here. Oh, we see a misclick. We see that that uh, Ep Control Center missed that Reckoner, and in turn, he's going to be going straight towards the tier three structure, and that's a great deploy there by by Aggressor Ruzi. He's placed now right beside the Technology Assembler. And we can say goodbye to Tier 3 from One Vision. He's gonna definitely going to lose this um, technology sampler. He can't save it whatsoever. He did manage to take out a, get out a tripod and a storm column. But at the same time, it's like, well, you're going to be losing uh, a Tier 3 and a power plant. So that's not very good. And in the meantime, this is a lot of infantry coming off from Extremizer. Extremizer loves his infantry. He's going to get all the upgrades for, um, for it. We're going to be seeing some Confessors and Tib Infusion, which is going to be very powerful. Small contingent of uh, Steel Town's uh, forces here coming up from Incapiza. Incapiza has a couple Titans and Wolverines. They don't have any uh, AP ammo, which is not good. They need to get uh, some they need to get some type of like that. But all they're, they're trying to chase the Shielded Harvester, which is from Senna. And Senna is just trying to retreat to back to his base to get that full little blue tip. He could probably make it if he's lucky. I think he will. And these uh, one Wolverines are going to be going straight to the down down the base now. And they they do have AP ammo finally. Good good quality there. Now they're going to be attacking Aggressor Ruse base with Scorpion tanks taking a little bit of forces there, but we see Senna has got Shard Walkers with the shields and a Reaper tripod, so this force here could be definitely be destroyed. Inca Paisa, yeah, he's a great guy. I mean, for the Inca Open that happened uh, last year, and the Inca Open there, that's going to happen this year, he's donated a ton of cash. He's really devoted to the uh, to the Kane's Wrath uh, community, and he's a very, very great guy too. I love staying out this guy. And speaking of Inca Paisa, here comes a lot of hammerheads. They don't have any upgrades, and they don't have any upgrades because these steel towns. But there's nothing in those the hammerheads either. So these hammerheads are just going to absolutely wreck everything that uh, Aggressoru has, but it needs to be careful because there's a storm column there, and the shard walkers are going to be destroying quite a bit of those hammerheads. And I'm not sure if you noticed their um, liquid ocelot, but there was an ion storm that happened uh, if you're not paying attention to it. But the ion storm is uh, the ha what happens when the every uh, couple minutes or so, and it's a very, very cool feature. It must be scary out in the bedroom before this command it can be a little scary, but if you play on this map quite a bit of times, you notice that the Ion Storm doesn't do a whole hell of a lot of damage, only to weaker forces. But um, at the same time, a lot of Reaper Tripods coming up from Senna, and he does have Conversion Reserves and the Force Fuel Generator, so it's going to be very, very good. We see a Wormhole here, I'm, pr I'm pretty sure I missed it, but that was from uh, One Vision. He did manage to, you think he probably uh, might control some, some unit, or some building, and he placed down a uh, Storm Column there. I thought he would definitely go for that drone platform, but I guess he misclicked or something, I can't remember what happened. But a lot of infantry coming off from Extremizer and a couple of Venoms here too to just defend his base. He harvested a ton of the, of that uh, Tiberium. He has like, what, four refineries. That's a lot of income here. Four refineries and we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven harvesters. That's quite a bit of economy coming off from Extremizer. At the same time, we see that one vision has got a couple of uh, tripods of his own here which, with the shields. And shields and shock troopers with blinks and plasma dislaunchers. That is very nice. I think he's, he's definitely screen vanilla for sure. We got a signal transmitter as well, so maybe we see some uh, tier four uh, airships coming out from from that player. In the meantime, what has Genia been up to? Genia has moved his drone platform ahead a little bit. He's just now getting his economy off and running. He placed his uh, gravity sub in a very peculiar position, maybe just for some devastator warships and or planetary assault carriers. Uh, we see a Marv coming out now from, from uh, Incapiza. Incapiza has uh, two rockets in it and two repair pods. So that's very good. Coming in with the, a moderate here force here from uh, One Vision. 
So this could be a very, very big battle here. But at the same time, we see that Senna is going to be very prepared for this. He has a lot of tripods of his own. They're not charged up. And charge, non-charged tripods are not going to do a whole hell of a lot of damage. All we see is stasis shields coming in from, I'm pretty sure it was Senna, and he, and he uh, face fielded a, body over, but a counter stasis shield and then forced to go with his own phase. And now we see another uh, support, support power, which was the uh, chakra of artillery coming in, taking out a couple of tripods, but they're in phase, so it doesn't matter. Here it come. We see an amp control center coming in, but we did, but takes out all the shields, and this is going to be very, very powerful. We see Norbert of Bobarba coming in. Holy cow! And a repeat uh, amp control center coming in, and all oh, this is just going to be huge. Base fields and uh, Chicago artillery. Orbital Bobarba. This is a massive battle here by 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 all these players. This is going to be huge. Oh, I can't even see what's happening here, but I think that Senna might pull through because he has a lot more Reaper tripods than. Uh, than, uh, than one vision, and that's uh, more surprising, it's still alive. But as, as I actually think it's going to get focused on by the Reaper Tripods. Just a lot of uh, carnage and wreck there from, uh, from all four of those players. That's just, that's just amazing. Yeah, the Marv is just has not been sniped this entire time, but, which is a demon you have to focus on. But it's just now just empty. And we see it's probably going to it's definitely going to go down, but uh, Senna has so sacrificed a lot of his force. And a nice Orca Strike coming in, destroying all four, or maybe, yeah, just three of those husks. So that's not very good. Senna could have captured them. But at the same time, now we see that Senna is losing ground with his uh, Reaper Tripods, um, those uh, Hammerheads, which a couple of Rocket Squads in it too. And they should definitely destroy all these husks, because this is a lot of cash that Senna put into building these Tripods. He definitely needs to destroy them, and he's definitely going to do so indeed. Oh, that was a nice uh, uh, bend detonation there coming in from. I'm pretty sure that was a streamizer. Destroyed all, all, all of the mechapades went down from Junia. That was huge, and a heat, and a nice. We have you see uh, Redeemer Engineering, just, uh, just a Redeemer, but that's cloaked. <laughs> Screw you up there. Uh, Jump off from coming in from the Senna for some strange reason. Maybe he wants to place down a, a refinery at the blue field. That could be a possibility. Meanwhile, what has everybody else been doing? I think everybody else exhausted all their Tiberium with that huge battle there, but we see Junia is going for some devastated warships. He doesn't have the uh, Traveler engines just yet, but I'm pretty sure he's going to get them soon enough. But we see the Redeemer's coming in now, and the Redeemer does get detected by that plasma missile battery, and this could be pretty devastating because his uh, warp chasm is going to be under attack, and it's not, not going to be defended at all, and he has to force to sell it off because you, you know he can't uh, de defend that. And those devastated warships are going to be going and rejoining the force here. The Marv has been rebuilt now from Junia. He's put two rockets in it and two repair pods as well. As well as uh, some Manalia tripods coming in. We see there's two worships as well from, from One Vision. And now Genia has pushed his drone platform to just the front lines here. And we could see a massive battle again, but Genia, but the Senate has to watch out that he does his MC doesn't get sniped by the Devastator warships. Which could possibly be end up uh, destroying his whole uh, construction operations for himself. I'm not sure if this is gonna be a good idea if when you're engaging, but the thing is it's gonna be an even battle soon enough. Inca Pies needs to watch out that he doesn't uh, go with his Marv and could just get destroyed again. Just reverse moving back a little bit with his Marv and a nice amp shot there from One Vision taking out all of this, all the forces here and then, and also just for good measures there's a shockwave of artillery coming in. So now uh, the top top city team has the opportunity to destroy all, a lot of uh, tier 3 forces here and a lot of them are in the red and that uh, Redeemer also from Regressor Roo is also going to go down as well. And now the uh, drone platform has been destroyed, which means Senna has no way of building anything. He doesn't even have a drone platform, um, a what's it called, a gravity stabilizer. So that means he can't build another drone platform, which is not which is not very good. The Marv is being uh, attacked now by that Redeemer, but it's getting pretty low on health now. And here comes some behemoths now from Mika Pies, and Mika Pies is going to be doing it. And a nice shot there by the uh, soccer, not shot by artillery. That was a supersonic shot by those. Um, I'm pretty sure it was. Uh, yeah, it was. Was it? Was it uh, yeah, it was a Kapaiza who did it. Just, just barely, yeah. I mean, uh, the bottom side team wasn't focusing a whole lot on destroying the, the Marv, but oh my god! Three Demonstrator Warriors were destroyed by those Plaza Missile Batteries. That was a waste. That was a waste. But anyway, like, like you were saying, uh, dude, 
yeah, it was uh, the Marv was being focused down, but it wasn't getting totally focused. It was getting focused by maybe one or two avatars, and then the Redeemer afterwards. But they weren't focusing down properly. They were focusing on the uh, other things, like the like the tripods. They definitely needed to get focused down now. But the problem is, one Vision can just reclaim them and get a, get his army bolstered up again. Yeah, Jani has been totally destroyed. Um, the problem is the Incapaiza was focusing on helping out one vision instead of focusing on his ally, and in turn, uh, in Extremizer totally destroyed Jania's base. And I think Jania might have been defeated because I was I wasn't re I wasn't paying attention to who's been defeated. But I'm pretty sure uh, Jania is gone because you know he's not the type of guy that likes to stay around. When he, when he knows he's defeated, he is defeated. So that's that's not very good. So now we. Uh, I can't. I, I didn't see, but I'm pretty sure he did because that's what you do in a three versus three, two v two. When you know you're defeated, you don't uh, wait till you don't sell everything off. You make sure that the last structure, po possible structure, get destroyed. But now Extreme Extremizer is coming in, and he's destroying uh, Incapaiza's base. Incapaiza lost his tier two, which which means no more hammerheads. But at the same time, I mean hammerheads would be pretty useless against venoms. But now we see that. Uh, this whole force here. Oh, but at the bottom here, we see that uh, one vision is going to be going through and destroying Senna, which means Senna is definitely going to be out of this game. He doesn't have any production structures left. And this could be. Oh, it's a nice uh, Callus missile there. I'm pretty sure that was from Extremizer. But now with that uh, construction area, it should be under attack now. So this could be a base race scenario. I mean, this it looks like it's going to be that way because it, one vision is definitely going to be attacking um, uh, Aggressor Roo. And. Oh, the Aggressor Root just barely got out as a Redeemer, but he needs to watch out that he doesn't get emped by that tripod, which it gets emped. Oh, that's, that's unfortunate. And we see Extremizer is also destroying uh, Ikapaiza. I think Ikapaiza might, be, might have been defeated. Nope, he has a single barracks stashed away in the corner there, so he's still alive. He is still alive. I'm not sure what kind of units he has left. He's, I think he has, he has Marv. Yeah, he has his Marv. So now this, this is going to be very, very close. Only a couple of tripods and some behemoths to defend against that onslaught of attacks there from Extremizer. I think it's pretty, it's too close to call here, but I think oh, but I think uh, the bottom side team has the advantage. But at the same time, I mean, both Senna and Aggressoru have been defeated, so this could be all uh, all Extremizer and Extremizer. Oh, a nice uh, shot there by that uh, M Control Center taking out the shield symbols of another tripod. But this is the last assault there, I think, from Extremizer. If he doesn't destroy One Vision, then he's definitely going to get uh, absolutely massacred. But uh, One Vision, he's definitely going to lose his uh, Redeemer for sure. And with no anti air here, Extremizer is going to lose all of his uh, avatars to the Disintegrator squads and the Devastator warships. did lose quite a bit of them and he still has a little bit left but at the same time the behemoths are going down too so the shock troopers need to come in and this year's need to finish off this tier 3 force here then uh, one vision will be ha will have access to more reaper tripods and avatars for himself this can be very dangerous the island storm is un is uh gracing us with his presence now so something happened to the drone platform I oh the uh purifier was there that's what happened and stealth tanks coming out from one from extremize of stealth tanks but uh, they're uh, way out of position they're not going to help, help do anything and with this, Inca Pies is still alive. He's using his Marv to a full extent, destroying the re remainder of Aggressor Roo's forces. And this could definitely be GG for him. I mean, Senna had left the game quite a while ago. So the game's still going. Yes, I'm quite impressed from the team They are doing very well together. They're recording their attacks very well. And they managed to take out Senna and put uh, Aggressor in a bad position as well. But now the game is slowed down to a crawl. It all comes to who has the better sense of having a big army and using the to a full extent because what, because Extreme Miser is just using his Brock of Militants just to scout in and he lost quite a bit of them too to those Devastator warships. They do a ton of damage. But at the same time, uh, uh, Extreme Miser I think that's what these Venoms are. These are either the Venoms. Yep, these are the Venoms of Extremizer. Uh, the Venoms are from Extremizer are doing a ton of damage to the backside of the of a, one of his base. They took out all the tip spikes. And oh my god, I missed it. There was a tip bay detonation from Extremizer. It took out a ton of One Vision's forces. Ugh, that was not that was not very good by him. Good. That was good for 
Barry Schumacher, which, speaking of which, he's the last player of the game that both uh, Gressaru and uh, Sen have been defeated. So that Marv is uh, at elite status, and if that goes heroic, that could be uh, a death trap for one vision, or for no, excuse me, for one vision for Extremizer. Yes, and smartly, uh, if you notice, one vision has tanked uh, up with uh, the Marv with uh, gun vocals and and slingshot the bar. Yeah, those gunwalkers are doing, doing pretty good now, but the problem is he doesn't know that the, the Redeemer is there, which is crushing all the gunwalkers. And he has he has on hold fire stance, which is a very smart idea. But now the Marv, since the battle base was destroyed, nope, nope the battle base was not destroyed, but the, uh, the slingshots here, like you said, are a good choice, and they're just going to be crushing all the infantry. And that was very good. That was very well done by by by, uh, by Kapaza. But he has to watch out that the Redeemer is coming towards him, and that uh, battle base is way out of position. Oh, but that was a nice amp shot there by Extremizer, and that Marv could definitely be destroyed. I don't know. I don't understand. I don't know how Extremizer can uh, defend this. Here comes a mind strike coming in, and now we can do a ton of damage to that Marv. Oh, that's a dead GG for that Marv. He he can't save it. That uh, that Marv has been destroyed. One more shot from that Redeemer destroys, it, and the battle base is also going to be destroyed. So that's uh, that's GG for Ikapai. I mean, he lost his frontal force, and now. All that remains is One Vision's uh, Tier 3 army here. So Inca Pies has been defeated. You have all this money and all this stuff to uh, to One Vision. So now it's a 1v1. One one one. And this Venom army is very dangerous for this One Vision. I think Extremizer is controlling this at the moment. This Venoms are doing a ton of damage. A lot of them are in the red though, as you can see. They're quite. They're either in the red there. With if you put on the health bars, and they're just going to get all massacred there by uh, the by that one single plasma missile battery. Surprisingly, that one vision does not have uh, shard launchers to his name. But then again, he doesn't need shard launchers because if they're, if if uh, Extremizer is just building venoms, he could do without the without the shard launcher because he doesn't have any secret tanks either. But this is a massive uh, rocket squad force here from Extremizer. This could. Definitely be the death blow for One Vision if he doesn't play his cards right. He doesn't have any uh, Devastator Warships left, so he doesn't have quite a lot of anti-infantry. He does have Gunwalkers, but he doesn't have Tier 3, which means no phase field. So this could be the death blow here. But at the same time, the the, the Suppression Fire coming up from the Behemoths is going to put those uh, Rock Squads into Suppression Fire. And we see the Redemption Support Power coming in, which means which means only one thing. We see the Awakened Squads, and Awakened Squads are coming in. They're going to be firing their end on the Reaper Tripods. And the Rage Generator coming in. This is a brilliant, brilliant uh, counterattack there by Extremizer. He uses rockets, and then he found out that he was going to be in Suppression Fire, Redemption Support Power, Awaken Squad, and, and the Redeemer. Great combination. Great combination there by Extremizer. He's be coming in, destroying a lot of One Vision's forces. This is the One Vision's last stand. The, the uh, Venoms are coming in now. They're doing a little bit of uh, hit and run tactics. That's understandable. We need to watch out for the uh, Plaza Missile Batteries as well. But a lot of rocket squads coming in from Extremizer, and this is a huge death blow. I'm not sure how One Vision can support this. He may have to tap out of this game. We'll have to see. But uh, these, just, these the militant rocket squads are just doing a ton of damage, and the M shots there from the Wicked squads are doing a shit ton of work too, as well. Excuse my language. I don't like to swear while I'm doing commentaries. The vapor bomb, and that does a ton of damage to that uh, drone platform. But now we see that that's uh, another tripods from One Vision have uh, knocked down that Redeemer. But at the same time, with no uh, hardly in the anti-air to speak of, those uh, Venoms are just going to destroy those Reaper tripods. And One Vision has been defeated. What a game! That was a great game. Yeah, that was a very entertaining game. So, obviously, you can see the unit scrap. You see that Extremizer had the most units out of the entire game. No surprise there, because he had a lot of infantry structures. It was all Extremizer, because he had a ton of uh, structures. Uh, resources. Uh, surprisingly, One Vision had the most resources, but then uh, Extremizer blew away with all the uh, other resources. And the stats, I'm not going to go through any of them, because it's just so boring. So, Team 1 was uh, Extremizer, Aggressor Ru, and Senna. So we see 539,927 in Team 1, and Team 2 was 487,809. 
So wow, that was over 26, 17. Cabal, I I saw him and he he was spamming um, a lot of collectives you pointed out and also uh, once uh, somehow he uh, got rid of that uh, right hand side guy he came in with an opening and he kept on attacking and uh, taking out uh, in Capesa I think uh, what do you think what went tactically wrong for team in Capesa did in Capesa should have helped the right hand side guy or maybe he, he did right by helping one vision I'm pretty sure the problem was that one vision since he was so committed to attacking Senna that uh, one vision or um one vision decided to go in and then Ikapaisa decided to help which in turn allowed extremizer since he had a lot more economy than um than Jania, allowed him to push into his base with with no defense whatsoever and then just massacre all of Jania's forces and then take his forces and then go and attack uh, extreme uh, Incapaza and then destroy all his all his base and then m made it so that was a that was a t turning point in the game was was Incapaza, uh allowing allowing uh, would you need to get destroyed by Extremizer and then in turn lost the game. It's very really good game. Thank you so much for having me here, Kabal. Yeah, thanks for doing the du double con uh, dual commentary, and we'll see you guys all next time. Come